Today we are in Miami and we're going to take my friend Doug's Pearson Ensign for a quick sail. I think this boat looks and sails very nice. About the same length as the boat I sailed to Hawaii, but with a bigger cockpit and a smaller cabin. wasn't a bad idea. Yeah. Come on, there we go. Don't make Echo look bad. No, no, it's gonna look good. <laughs> it's money, it's money. I don't wanna have any of those bean comments on YouTube. <laughs> they're, they're ravenous. <laughs> yeah, just a little sprinkle. There, green marker. Here we go. Tomorrow, I'm going to set sail for Ramrod Key. So I'm uh, positioning my boat actually right next to the dinghy dock because I have to pick up my I'm having Doug charge my battery since I lost one of the solar panels uh, so I have a full battery charge when I leave so I'm just gonna pull right at the dinghy dock so I can uh, park my boat there and take some up that battery tomorrow morning so hopefully we can it's not too shallow here. good morning today we're gonna sail from Miami to Ramrod Key it's about 100 miles I just pulled up to the dinghy dock so I could get everything configured and uh, we're ready to go. We'll be sailing my free Bayfield 29. This boat is, I got it sailing and it's been working pretty well. Not bad for a free boat. And we are on our way. I think we'll just use the electric motor to get us into the channel and then I can just pull the jib up. And we can sail all the way out of here. I want to put these fenders in on the deck though, just to, to not flopping all over the place. <clears throat> That's how you gotta do it one-handed. There you go. Get our sails up. Right out of the marina here. Looking good. I think we'll probably just use the jib mostly today. And maybe I'll get out the bigger Genoa. That's the, the bigger head sail. And uh, first we just gotta kinda navigate out of uh, Miami. So I, I think we maybe stay in the channel for a little bit and then maybe it opens up and you just go kinda straight towards the, uh, around Key Biscayne. And then we're gonna go outside uh, because or a sailboat and it gives us more room. You don't have to worry about bridges or as much shallow stuff. And uh, I mean, if it calms down, I think the wind's gonna be pretty strong from behind, but if it does calm down, there's some cool reefs we could stop at maybe along the way. So we'll see, got my snorkel and mask. I think these War M catamarans are pretty cool. I was trying to find one for my next boat possibly, but now I'm looking at uh, like uh, older trimarans. Those could be interesting too. Or at least I think that is a War M. Right here, I'm just hanging on our uh, Genoa. So we have a little more power. But we're going pretty good with the jib. There we go, fishing boats are already out. Another one back here. All right, just gotta run these sheets and we're good. Now we got both head sails pulling us along. I don't really think that the stay sail gives me much power when I'm going downwind like this, but 
it makes it a lot easier to raise the <laughs> the, the big Genoa. So I like to have them both up there. Always good to take a look at the chart before you go. So here we are leaving Miami. And we'll go out through this pass here by Key Biscayne. And then we are in the Atlantic Ocean. And this, this app is called Navionics. I get asked that every time I show it. But it's pretty good. And uh, so we can just kind of measure. And so it's a straight line distance of 60 nautical miles. But that's kind of misleading. So this app is called Luck Grib. And uh, it shows a little, it shows uh, a little bit better. Like actually the actual route will take and you can switch over to the Gulf Stream and you can see I'm trying to hug uh, the coast to stay inside the Gulf Stream current, which would be opposing us if I was to go into it. interesting little houses out here. So this area is called uh, Stiltsville where there's uh, interesting houses on the water. Um, I looked it up and apparently they originally started building structures out here uh, in the 20s and 30s to let them so, so they could gamble and be a mile offshore where it was legal. It's kind of interesting and then I guess some of the boat clubs, clubs and other people built more uh, just for various things, and there's a, there's a bunch of them out here. They're pretty they're pretty interesting. Feels like a bit of rain coming through. Maybe a bit of a squall, but it doesn't look too strong. So I'm gonna just leave the sails up and we'll continue sailing wing on wing downwind. Got the stay sail and the Genoa out. Here comes the rain. I'll just wait it out down here. Probably only 10 minutes long. some potatoes and sausage. I gotta find that onion. I got an onion somewhere in here. You know I'm sailing with those fenders out. So now I gotta jive the uh, the big uh, Genoa there. It keeps, I don't know, the wind must have shifted. It keeps going the back wind. It's kind of tricky with the stay sail there. Like you have to get it through that little slot. It's kind of tricky. You just gotta like force it through there, I guess. So I let that out, start pulling on. Oh, I gotta grab the other sheet too. Ah, somewhere up there. Okay, got the sheet. 
see if we can get the sail to go through its slot. Come on. It just wants to get stuck up there always. Gotta force it. I go around this much. Come on, Sam. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Got it. Had to kind of winch it over. Uh, sometimes it goes through easier. That was a hard one. Like rains following us. So I'm getting ready for nighttime. I was hoping I might be able to get some sleep, but I forgot. There's kind of like reefs over on this side, and then the little islands over on this side. So. I have to kind of stay in between them because if I go any further offshore, then um, I'll get into the Gulf Stream properly. So I think I'll probably only be able to sleep for maybe 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes at a time. And I couldn't take any naps today either because uh, same situation. I can usually only do a, uh, a 10 minute nap when I'm really, really tired uh, because I need like 10 minutes to fall asleep and then it's time to, time to look up again. So we'll just have to keep sailing until I get really, really tired and then I'll be able to get a little bit of limited sleep. The sun is gone. The darkness, the darkness is real. My little uh, battery lights are actually survived the last two weeks in the rain and stuff. Uh, I thought they were not waterproof. I guess they, they seem to last in the, uh, okay outside. I kind of just thought I would throw them out and get it and put a new pair on. So frustrated with myself. Ah, I just ran the boat aground. I was so dumb. I had my timer set so I would wake up like way before I got any, anywhere near close to shore uh, to jive the boat. And uh, I woke up and the timer hadn't had been paused somehow. And fortunately, we're just in the sand. I went out and dragged out an anchor, but the wind is blowing us into the uh, the shore right now. Uh, and uh, I had I had the, the sails kind of dragged us up a little bit so I think we just need the tide to come up about a foot and uh, I'll be able to use the anchor to winch myself off um, I tried to winch myself off just now but the anchor wasn't biting hard enough to to get me off so unfortunately I don't have my my really good anchors like I do on the pickled herring I just have a yeah whatever we'll, 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 it'll be okay at least it didn't hit a reef or anything and here's looking at the tide table. So I think it's good that it's low tide because that means the tide can only come up from here. And in a, in a few hours, it should be high enough for us to get off. So uh, well, maybe maybe more than a few hours, but it, it won't be too long. And then it comes way up this evening. Man, I'm really glad it's just a sandy beach and not rocks or, or oh man, if it was a the bridge or something. Be dismasted probably. I think in the future, if I have these kind of situations, I'm gonna have to set two alarms before I can sleep, and one of them's gonna have to be far, far, on the other side of the boat, so I actually have to get up. So I got my anchor line run back to the switch, and I spun the boat around. It's still kind of windy, wind pushing me up on the shore. Yes, I was able to free the boat. Oh man, this little motor to gave me just enough push to pull up the anchor and get this boat spun, spun around and here you can see 
us free from the beach there. And I am so glad we didn't hit any power lines or anything. Now I've got two timers going, and then in the future I think I'll have two different phones with timers going. Looks a little like rain over there. Looks like it might just go south of us though. We are sailing by the uh, seven mile bridge back there, just past Marathon. And I think we got about 20 miles to go till Ramrod Key. The wind's kind of lightening up. You know, the sails stay open. They're still moving. We slow down to maybe a little three knots, a little less than three knots, maybe. There's always how the end goes. So you're so close to being there, and then <laughs> the wind just slowly dies down. And if I hadn't gone aground, I'd be, I'd be there like two hours ago. But I ended up spending like three or four hours on that beach last night. Hey, dolphin. There we go. Oh, no. We're gonna run into the fishing buoy. Looks like we must jive the, the sail once again. And I'm thinking, oh, it's actually almost done. Just to give it a little, oh, it's coming through. It's going through a slot. Oh, easy peasy. Now I need to walk up and grab that sheet thing because that other sheet is not long enough. All right, went forward, got my sheet. Let's release this one. Do not let that touch the phone. There it goes. All right. Wind's picking up a little. Should be in in like two or three hours. So it's about nine in the morning, but I don't think our tide's gonna be high enough to, uh, to get into this guy's, this guy's uh, canal until probably this evening, maybe around seven or eight. Uh, and it's starting to get warm. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just a little bit uh, further offshore and go anchor out by the reef or grab one of those mooring balls and then do a little bit of a little snorkeling. So, gotta change the course here. It's as easy as remembering which way's left that way. Two clicks. And so we just gotta go seven miles that way. And we'll be there. 
see you again in like a couple hours when I get there. rougher than I thought it'd be out here. I'm gonna go see if I sail around to the leeward side of the reef, if it's a little calmer, maybe. I had to bail on the uh, snorkeling at the reef. I was just too tired. I went by there, I saw the mooring balls, and then I thought there might be some mooring balls on the other side of the reefs, because the waves are really big on the windward side. And then there weren't any any mooring balls I could reach once I sailed downwind. And I didn't want to put the mainsail to try to tack my way back up again. I was just getting frustrated at everything. My fingernails ingrown and infected. Super tired. I broke my thumb, I think, when I was skiing. The autopilot pin broke off. I can't get asleep. I'm getting frustrated. Coming up on our inlet. Oh man, this is a tight channel. Alright, let's stay right in the middle here. I just anchored for a few hours and took a nap out here in the bay. And now I'm on my way into the, this uh, channel to go visit this, uh, this dock here. Cool spot. Pretty cool spot back here. So we're just gonna go to the second canal. So here we are at this lovely dock here. And I'm gonna stay here for a few days. And uh, well, I'm gonna get the boat a little bit cleaned up too. It's kind of gotten a little messy. And see if we can fix a few things before we head on. Here we are at our new dock. Um, my host, uh, Townsley, uh, offered to host me here for a few days. And so we're just gonna get the boat cleaned up a little bit before we head on over to uh, probably Fort Myers Beach, maybe, maybe a few more stops in the Keys on the way.